You die down so you saw a tusky and speared it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Good morning and welcome to the last day diving in Australia with my very handsome brother, the one and only Timothy McDonald. Today we're looking for tusk fish, coral trout, and anything else that's tasty. Gorgeous day, gorgeous morning, and the visibility looks good. How are you, Timothy? Frustrated about my lack of hustle. Hustle, we are late. Just the tide, then as usual, gin and round. Didn't want to get up early. Hard work getting up at 10 to 4. Useless o'clock. My brother Jesse had not dived in about three years, so was a little apprehensive about the 16 metres. Shoot a dirty big tusk fish. Clean. Jesse said it was quite fishy, so the next drift I jumped in with him. This coffee rock is exactly the type of area you'd expect to find a big black spot tusk fish. There were loads of the usual suspects around, including one of my favourite fish to eat in Australia. Jesse had also shot one of these grassy emperors. For a bloke that hasn't dived in three years, it certainly doesn't show. It's good, good looking rock, mate. There were several patches of this ground and because of the excellent visibility, you could just drift between them. I had never dived this area before and it was full of life. Looking to the top right, you can see a small mackerel coming through the water column. Behind me out on the sand, there are a few snapper as well, but with where I've landed, there isn't much hope of getting one. What I'm really looking for is a brute of a tusk fish. Behind that estuary cod, there is another favourite fish of mine, the Moses perch, and a big one too. Moses perch are one of my favourite fish to eat. They don't grow much more than about three kilograms, and anything over a kilo and a half is a really solid fish. I swam up current to the front edge of the reef in this area, in hopes of finding those snapper. Once again, very fishy and even some juvenile red emperor can be seen. Finally, I spot the snapper off in the distance and immediately lower my body to hide and begin to scratch. Realistically, I should have been hiding low from the start of the dive, but I was just so in awe of all the fish life, I kind of forgot about hunting. Horrible shot on this snapper, but at least you don't tend to eat the bum of the fish anyways. I swapped out with Tim and it wasn't long before he was on as well. That's a nice little snapper, mate. These first couple spots have been really productive. Lots of fish life. Seen a few really nice snapper. Managed to get a small squire. These are super delicious. When they get a bit bigger, they're a little bit more difficult to shoot. Tim's just shot a nice one. But one of the best things to eat is this grassy emperor here. These are super tasty. We'll shoot these every time I see them. They're just so good to eat. But lots of fish life around. Still haven't found any massive tusk fish, but I'm sure if we keep persisting, we'll find some bigger fish. You've been busy. Yeah. I got one of these grasses, clearly the bigger one, and uh, Tim got the other one. Hey, they're good looking fish, aren't they? They're really nice grasses. I've got no idea. I found a really big show just up there, like really big. Let's go dive it.
Tim and I used to film each other all the time while spearfishing, and this was giving me waves of nostalgia. A plump, grassy emperor for Tim, now it is my turn. We're finding loads of this really cool country. Hard rock in these type of areas is really hard to find. But when you do find it, so many fish. I mean, there's just so many species there. You could shoot fish all day long, but we're just limiting ourselves to a few really nice eating fish, particularly the grassy emperors and the Moses perch. But hopefully a bit later, we can find some tusk fish or coral trout. Real fishy right under the boat now, dive now. As they both dive, I notice a rather enormous ship heading our way. We were going to need to move hastily when they returned to the surface. Big tusky. Whopper! Oh. There you go. Heaps of time, heaps of time. You're good, you're Gucci, you're Gucci. No way, that fish will, that thing will be honest in a minute. Oh, that is a good fish, mate. Woohoo! Nice, mate. Yes. That's your one. That's what we wanted. Heck yeah. That's a nice fish, eh? Hey? There's the future boys, renewable energy. Look at that. I only burned a thousand million megalitres of oil to get it here. <laughs> you dive down so you saw a tusky and speared it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I saw this black patch of reef and uh, dove down on the black patch of reef and sure enough, this guy just comes in like a big moon face. He's got his fat jaw and I think that's bigger than any tusk fish I've ever shot. That's bigger than any tusk fish I've ever shot, except this one. Yeah. For a lad that hasn't dived in three and a half years, certainly doesn't show it. The tide has changed, so we're moving away from that area we're at this morning, going to look on some deeper spots for some coral trout. Timmy's just stopping off here to get some crayfish, one of his favorite little crayfish rocks. I'll do, mate, throw her in. After trying a dozen places looking for fish without success, we eventually come across a patch of reef that was lit up on the sonar. Before even reaching the bottom, I can see what we've been looking for. I know this shot is a little dubious and these bigger coral trout are quite powerful. I try and gently keep it off the reef without ripping my shaft out. With a second shot, Tim secures my fish after seeing my horrible first shot, but it appears the pectoral fin joint on a coral trout is pretty robust. We had time for one last spot where you can sometimes find pearl perch, an endemic species which can be tricky to find in shallow enough water. They are spectacular on the plate and Tim comes up with one first drop. This place is a little bit deep for my brother, so it's my turn. The large shoal of pearl perch are hanging off the bottom. Now I just have to try and find a big one. You can tell by the large eye that these fish are equipped for hunting in the deep, and linefishers often catch them in over 100 metres of water. Great way to cap off the end of the Australia tour. Timothy may have just convinced me that it's worth actually diving here and keeping my boat. But great range of species, Brisbane, a lot of fish to offer. 
Some great eating fish, some, some that are not so smart like these pearl perch, some that are a little bit harder like the snapper, and some that are just plain old big and beautiful like that big tusk fish. See you in the kitchen. You always gotta take a photo with a fish next to a beer can. It's that great, way yeah. it's it's a uniform measure of how big the fish is. You can't everyone, know, it. everyone knows what a beer can is. Everyone knows what a beer can is. This is a lovely grassy emperor. And it is the size of? A couple of beer cans. Three and a half beer cans. Oh gosh. <laughs> so what's going on here, Dan? Well, this is one of the tastiest fish that you can get in this part of the world. They grow big, fast growing. They taste sensational, but the only caveat is they can be slightly painful to fill it because they are big and they do get a bit of a slime on them. But if you can manage to get through all that, you end up with a gorgeous white <laughs> fillers like that. Exhibit A on the slippery scales. And then take the wings off a fish like this. There, so much meat there to get stuck into, but that is gorgeous fish. Amazing. That come in. And who shot the biggest fish, Dan? Jesse shot the biggest fish. <laughs> Can we have that face again? <laughs> this is what we were after yesterday, the tusk fish, and this a coral trap. Plectropomus lepidus. This is slightly different to the one that Hannah and I got in Bundaberg. Smaller spots, equally as tasty. What we're gonna do with this, take the fillets off and also cook up the skin because I've seen this done online a few times and it turns out like pork crackling. Really excited to try that on this coral trout. Two trout fillets. And of course, can't let the wings go to waste on a fish like this. Uh, you can see a little bone here. You can get your knife up under there then back, that's all you need to do. Cut away from the gills, like that, to the throat. It'll cut through there, and then follow the ribs down. Belly flap. Through there, and just simply, <laughs> Give it another crack on the throat. Right. There. Hopefully, leave most of the guts in the gut cavity. But that is the belly flap of the trout. Pearl trout fillets. Try to take the skin off. Very easy to do. Get the knife in here. Grab onto the skin, gently work it back and forth. That is a fillet there. I've done a little bit of a terrible job on that section, oh, but we no. can deal with that. But this skin here, I'm going to keep that in the fridge for a night or two, just to dry it out. We'll wipe it all down with paper towel, and then we're going to deep fry small sections of that to make our crackling. Some very fine scales on this skin, beautiful strawberry colored, with dots on it, one of the best looking fish in the ocean. That night we had some friends over at Jesse's gaff and Tim gave us some of the craze he got. They always go down a treat on the barbecue along with the trout and tusk fish wings. There you go. In, oh, now flip her over, yeah, flip her over. Ooh, ooh. All right, Jake, have a, have a try, mate. Would you dine at this restaurant again? <laughs> yeah. I would definitely frequent. Uh, from a man that has been trying very hard to perfect pork crackling, this is excellent. <laughs> if not better. <laughs> the coral trout skin crackling was a huge hit. Here's how to make it yourself. All I've done here is put them in the fridge and then that has dehydrated them a little bit. The Young's modulus on these pearl trout skins is, is it high for, for stiff or low for stiff? High for stiff. High for stiff on the Young's modulus. High, as for, my, stiff. high for stiff, as my brother says, as a certified mechanical engineer, the best in Queensland. <coughs> Cut these into strips, deep fry them. Nice. Tasty. Oh, that works really well. <laughs> 
Crawl trout skin, semi-dried, ready to go into the stinking hot oil. Now, when you put things into very hot oil, lay them away from you because the splash goes that way, not towards you. After about 30 seconds to a minute, they are well and truly done. Tasty little nuggets that we need to let cool down a little bit before we eat them because I value the skin on my mouth. Papa, salt, please try. Okay. How many trout skins do you think you've thrown out in your life? All of them. <laughs> I'm going to pop out again. <laughs> Big thumbs up. Listen to the sound of that. Oh. As tasty as these trout skins are, all good things must come to an end and tomorrow we're heading back to Blighty. Don't know where the next video will be. That will probably be decided in the next couple of days on our way back, but <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this Australia tour, these last couple of videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked these videos, please give them a thumbs up. It actually helps us out. Subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you on an adventure somewhere. On the next leg. Yeah! Boom!